Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I would like to thank um, John Lowe, who uh, correctly identified a flaw in the design of the Union Jack, and this is one of the reasons I'm redoing it. So uh, this time I'm, re I'm redoing the design, but uh, I'm going to add some features that hopefully make up for uh, the you know the poor design, and hopefully we learn a little bit more. Well, I've certainly learned more. Uh, I hope you learn a lot from this tutorial as well. So let's uh, let's begin, shall we? So uh, before we do anything, um, I think the, it's it's best to calibrate the colors that we need. And these are the two colors that we're going to be using for the Union Jack. So it's th this red, which is a, a Pantone 186C, or you can use the hex code as you see here. And we've got the blue, which is Pantone 280C again with its uh, respective um, hex code. So if you'd like to jot that down, press pause while you do that, and then uh, we can move along. Great, so I'm going to uh, start off from scratch without anything this here. So uh, control N, I'm gonna copy the colors that we need, and I'm going to drag them down here to my uh, workspace uh, palette. So. Uh, I've said this before, a useful feature with Coral Draw is that it starts collecting all the colors that you use. But if they, if not, you can simply drag them down here. I won't need these two colors, but I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to work on the design of the flag. So the first thing we need to know is that the flag is actually made up of two uh, rectangles. So con press Control c as you drag. And um, I'm going to drag up to here, let go. And um, make sure that for the next stage you have alignment guides and dynamic guides enabled. This will be very important. Okay, it says snap, make sure it's snapped to objects. We're not going to use guidelines today, but the objects is important. So, um, selecting the square, press shift and simply drag until it snaps. Up, up, sorry, let's go back. So, drag and press the right button to make a copy. That's what I've done. I'm going to weld these two, press P, and I've got the, the, the background of the flag. Now to make this proportionate, as I tried to do uh, in the previous tutorial, I'm going to use the, the table function. Make sure you set it up to one row and 60 columns. Locate the top left hand side, it, uh, it tells you where the node is and simply drag all the way down. Okay, that's what we need. All right. Now, uh, we don't need all of the columns, but we do need uh, the proportion of this. We need this, well, just one of the columns for now. Now, the reason I use this, uh, this feature is because it, it, uh, it uh, covers the entire rectangle with exact number of columns to make it um, proportionate to what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to trace one of them like so. And uh, I'm going to get rid of the others I won't need. So um, let's make some copies here. I'm going to use a transformation docker. I've got it enabled here, but if you don't know how to do it, just simply go to Dockers, Transformations, and Position. Alt F7 is the hotkey. So I've got it enabled right here. I'm going to take it out. And I'm going to need nine more copies because I need ten of these columns. So nine. Make sure I want you select it where you want them. I want the copies to the right. So it's a question of just applying. I'm going to group them all. And here you see it says 10 objects. Good, press P. Great. Don't need this right now. Right, now I'm going to make a copy of these, but for the horizontal part of the flag. So press Control, right click to copy. I'm gonna drag, here we go, like that. Okay, good. So, um, I'm now going to ungroup all of them. So I'm going to ungroup them like this. 
I'm going to select the first two and weld them. Now, I don't have white here, but if I press white, it should pop up as it did here. So, select the bottom two, weld them, and color them white. The same things for the for these two and for the first two columns. Okay, good. Now I'm going to color the red um, these these inner rows and columns, which are six. Weld them and paint them red. The same goes for here. So select them all. Shift as you select. Okay. And print, paint them red. Good. Right. <coughs> now what I need is uh, to get rid of, of these lines here. So let's start with this quadrant over here. I'm going to copy this by simply just dragging it and aligning it to, to this part of the cross. Right. And the same thing with this one. I'm going to copy it. So drag, click right. And I'm going to merge them. Paint them white. Good. Now I've already made a copy. I'm not going to make another copy. I'm just simply going to um, drag it to the right. I am going to make a copy of this one though. So move up and copy. Um, weld and white. So lower this. I'm not going to copy it. I am going to copy this one though. There we go. Weld and white. I'm going to drag this to the left, like this, and I'm not going to copy this, I'm just simply going to drag it down. Okay, here we go. Weld and white. Great, good. One more, simply weld these two together. Brilliant. Okay, now this is important. I'm going to press, I'm going to uh, choose the wireframe option to view it. And you should have something like this. So before you go any further, make sure you have this outline of the flag. Okay. So you've got the, the flag of uh, St. George, which represents England, right in the center. And we've got uh, another flag here, um, another part of the flag that we need to actually get to work with, which is the which is diagonal, the diagonal cross, also known as the saltire. Good. So um, we've made an additional copy of the columns here. I'm going to pull this down. And this time I need six of them. So transformation docker. I need five copies. Make sure it's right. Select group. I've got six of them. That's what I want. And I'm going to really make sure it's nice and long. Press P. Enable the pivot, and I'm going to zoom in a little. Take this off. Try to zoom a little bit, a bit more. Okay, this is this is good enough. Or is it? Let's see if I can. Two fifty. Right. Right. Two hundred. Good. This is it. So make sure that the center line is right uh, in the middle of the corner, like this. This is what you want. Let's check that it's the same thing up here, and it is. Good, great. So, I'm going to uh, copy this, copy, control C, control V, and simply mirror, mirror it. All right, now why is this behind? Control, page up. Right, and the same thing here. I want this to go page up. Okay, that's what I want. Now, I just want this part of the the saltire, just part in this quadrant. So I'm going to draw rectangles. 
which can which we can remove. I'm just merely going to use it as a stencil. And this has to be this is important. This has to be very very uh, well aligned. So um, just make sure it snaps. And the same thing here. Make sure it snaps. Great. Um, right now, if you want to make sure that it is actually on the top left hand side, having that selected, select the the outer rectangle. Okay, like so. And press top and L for left. So T L top left. Good. Um, um, if you're satisfied with the, the actual size and alignment, make copies of it. So you see how useful it is when it snaps. But anyway, I'm going to align it. I am going to make sure that it's lined. So uh, this is B for bottom, left, L for left. This is again shift the, the outer uh, rectangle, bottom. And then with B, and then press R for right. But uh, I think it's let's go okay. Top and left. Oh, sorry, top right. Good. Now what we want is just simply this part. So I'm going to select the square or the rectangle rather, and then select one of the the diagonal crosses or the diagonal part of the cross, and simply intersect. The same thing. I will do with these ones. So intersect this one. Okay, intersect and intersect. We won't need this part or this part of the cross. So I'm just take a bot. And we won't need the uh, these rectangles anymore. So take them all off. Right. Now here, uh, we're going to ungroup them, ungroup everything, and here, ungroup everything. Okay. So you should have something like this. Now this is important. We're now going to select, uh, having unselected these groups, we're now going to select these two just these two top parts of the uh, of the cross. We're going to weld them together, and we're going to color it red. The same thing here: top, top, weld, color. And here it's the other way around. Here it's the bottom two. So ungroup all. And these two are the ones that you need to color red. Okay, you leave a white one here. The same goes here. Ungroup everything. And uh, simply uh, weld and color. So you should have something like this. Now, we have an outer rectangle, which should be blue. Just click on it and press blue. You should have something like this. Now, uh, we're going to weld these two, we, these three objects, and this individual one, and we're just simply going to color it white. So let's do that right now. So select these three, weld, white. This is just white. Okay. Don't worry about the black lines for now. So again, white. Uh, weld these three parts here, and white. Okay, again, white, and weld these three, white, and last but not least, the top left-hand quadrant, white, um, weld and white. So you should have something like this. Great. So, um, as you can obviously notice, there are lots of lines here that we do not need. I'm going to take off the the black outline of the cross of St. George and I'm going to click here on the right. Okay. 
Now this inner side, um, I am going to click right here and I'm going to give it a white, a white outline, like so. The same thing for this one and the same thing for this one. This I'm just going to simply take off the black. Okay. The same thing goes for here. White. White. Right click white. Take off the take off the white outline here. Um, we can also choose to have a, a red outline. Actually, let's keep it a red outline. Okay. And the same thing goes for this one. White. Okay, white. White and red. Okay. Still got some... Uh, Still got some uh, black, black outline here. So I'm just take that off. That's the white outside, and we just want, want need one more quadrant. Okay. Now you can choose to weld them, um, but I have seen that welding it uh, is a bit of an issue because it has leaves some sort of marks, some lines here if you weld them, um, and there are ways to go around that, but. Uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. We don't really need them. So wireframe, and we have everything nice and aligned. You see these lines? That's what you want. Okay. Enhanced, and there you have it. You should have something like that. Okay. Well, I hope you liked the tutorial. This is the first stage of the of the flag. So um, I hope you watch the next one. Uh, any questions or doubts that you have, please let me know. Drop a line, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're a a new uh, a new viewer. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye.